What's going on guys, Mimic here with another video. This one we're going to be talking about things to avoid. I'm going to be talking to like the top seven things to avoid at all costs as a new player playing Throne of Liberty, things that I've struggled with playing um, myself without having guides and without having any kind of mentor or any kind of guide to follow and things that I have seen firsthand. So I wanted to make a video for all of you guys uh, that aren't playing the game um, and have no experience playing this game yet that are looking to play it in the North America launch. This video is for you. Things that I would 100% avoid at all costs. It's going to save you a ton of headaches, a ton of money, and a ton of time. Real quick, before I jump in, though, I got to give a shout out to my guild leader here, Claire. I love you, Dad. He helped me with a little bit of the content on this video and gave me some ideas on kind of things to talk about. And we kind of had like a quick little round table. So shout out, Claire. Thank you so much. No MP guild leader, best guild leader on the planet real-time ranking top 10 let's go let's jump into the video all right so first thing guys okay get your notepad out and write this down get a sticky note put it somewhere in your room because i'm telling you this is the number one thing you do not want to do no matter what okay at all cost you must get your weapon your blue weapon Okay, when you get a blue weapon in the game, I don't care what you're playing. Great sword, sword and shield, wand, bow, crossbow, doesn't matter. You must get it to plus nine blue before anything. Because the way the game works is you're going to get a weapon, okay? Let's say you come over here and you come to the weapon crafter and you're all excited because you got a lithograph, right? You got the elite, elite resistance sword lithograph and you're going to craft your first blue weapon and you're so excited, right? You're going to get the weapon. It's going to be level zero, okay? As you progress through the game, the game is going to give you these growth stones that you're going to use uh, right here. You're going to use these to make your blue weapon a higher level blue weapon. OK, that blue weapon can go to plus nine. That's the cap right now that it can go. It, can, it can't go any higher than that. Plus nine is the highest it can go. You want to get your weapon to plus nine blue before you roll it into a purple weapon. Because when you roll it into a purple weapon, it's going to go from a plus nine blue to a plus six purple. The reason you don't want to roll a plus seven or a plus five or a plus six blue into a purple is because for one, you're going to gimp yourself. It costs way more to get purple growth stones than blue. These are like soft capped. You can only get a set amount of these in the game. They don't just give them out like the way you can do contracts for blue ones. You can't just get these by doing contracts and things. There is a, it, you're kind of gate kept on the purples. They, they only give you so much because they don't want everyone to max their character out like, you know, within two weeks. So it's going to be much harder for you to level your purple weapon if it's not plus six then you know like if it's a plus three purple like good luck it's gonna you're never gonna be able to get it to plus six soon and when you're very, very first starting the game those resources are gonna be so 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 hard to get so do yourself a favor get the plus nine blue weapon no matter what before you roll it into a purple okay that's number one avoid to mistake uh, uh mistakes to avoid never ever move a blue weapon to a purple weapon until it's plus nine okay also second thing don't get too caught up on getting purples early right let's say you're you know you just joined the guild right and we're going to talk more about guilds in a second but let's say you just joined a guild right and you guys do your first guild raid and let's just say you're a sword and shield user right so you've got you're a tank and you're a sword and shield user and you guys come over here one day and you do your guild raid right let's say you guys do Chernobog and you get this purple Chernobog beheading sword. Don't off the bat move your plus nine blue weapon to the Chernobog sword to make it plus six. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the only way that you can actually get the other traits on the Chernobog beheading sword is to have another Chernobog beheading sword. Do you know how long that's going to take you to get? You know how long it's going to take you to trade out your purple? It is going to take you a very long time, at least for free to play. If you're a swiper, then it, it doesn't really apply to you because you can just come into the auction house, right? 
as a swiper you can look at the weapons you can go to sword you can come to the chernobog sword and you can just buy whichever uh traits are on the market now they are very expensive this is seven thousand uh loosen here which is mm, somewhere around maybe 130 dollars us dollars okay so that's very expensive for one trait. And then you have to trade those traits up to plus four. On the purple weapons, they're plus four. You can see here my critical hit is 20, but it can go up to 80. That's three other purple traits that I need on the thorny edge to get it to plus 80. Of course, with purples, I've made a, a video on this. You can use blues as well. So you can come here, you can go to swords, you can come down here to swords and you can get the crit hit and, and everything here and buy it for cheaper than it would be for just buying the purple ones but the caveat is that these are rng if they're going to actually hit or not whereas the purple ones is a guaranteed for sure it's going to imprint on the weapon which is why purples are more expensive so don't get caught up on like trying to rush getting purples because a base purple plus six is not as good as a plus nine fully traded period i have been beat by people that don't have any purples that are still rocking plus nine blues but they're all fully specked out they are much stronger than people that are running like this see my purple headpiece is not maxed out so someone who has a blue headpiece with maxed is going to be stronger than me it's just the way the game is so don't get caught up early on on trying to just get purples and you see a purple and you're like oh i want to use the purple because what's going to happen is you're going to get you're going to get gate kept you're not going to be able to trade it out it's going to be very very long time before you trade it out for instance real quick and we'll move on this duke magnus belt i have ran the dungeon for this duke magnus belt many times and i have yet still to get the duke magnus belt i still need to get more max health i still need to get debuff duration so it is not in your best interest to rush purple stay with blues early trust me when i say it i know it's hard you want to upgrade you want to get the purple you're gonna gimp yourself if you do it early i promise you third thing is uh join a guild immediately when you're early on and you join a guild even if it's not the guild you're going to stay in forever it's okay because you're going to be getting rewards every time you guys do every time you guys do uh guild uh, events or any event and your guild places in it or you place in it your entire guild gets benefits for that you can see it's going to give you parchments they're going to give you book selections so that you can level up your your skills they're going to give you more parchments more parchments more parchments they're going to be a lot of parchments more book selections here uh look at these they're giving you blue selections here you're going to need all of this stuff guys early on i'm telling you this is like gold to early players this is so needed you guys have no idea how important it is to join a guild early when you get these when you get all of these uh, uh, resources, you're going to use these resources to increase your skill levels, which is going to make you stronger. So join a guild early on, have fun with the game, play with the guild, do your events, and you will get all of those rewards and be able to progress your character at a much, much faster rate as opposed to someone who is playing solo. Okay, so top three, avoid the mistake. Don't play solo. Join a guild. Trust me, it's worth it. Um, the next thing is know your upgrades okay do research on youtube watch my videos watch other content creator videos i suggest you guys deep dive into it and know which upgrades you guys want to do early on don't waste your stuff on dumb upgrades and what i mean by that is for instance know which traits are best in slot don't upgrade crappy traits that aren't going to help you and you waste all your resources on them just to find out that it's not the best and then it costs you a lot of time it costs you a lot of money it costs you a lot of lucent it just makes it's just you're just gimping yourself if you don't know what you need, need to be looking at first so with traits know your best in slot traits before you just start getting stuff before you start buying lithographs before you start doing anything know a direction know where you want to go beforehand so that you're not making these mistakes and it's not costing you a lot of time and it's not costing you a lot of money all right um also on your skills level up your skills the ones that are going to make you stronger in pve content and if you're a pvp or in pvp i can't tell you which skills those are because i know everyone plays different things but for me my thing when i first started playing great sword dagger is everything revolves around your stun. So I wanted to make sure my stun was high. I wanted to make sure my damage was high. I'm working on getting my guillotine blade to plus four. I've got my cold warrior maxed out at plus five because it gives me heavy attack chance. Um, 
before I switched to Sword and Shield, I had my Wrathful Edge maxed out at plus five, but I moved that over to Sword and Shield, so now it's only plus three. But you can see here, if I max this out, it's going to give me critical damage plus 18%. That's across the board, flat 18% critical damage. So if I'm looking to make my tune stronger, I want to get a skill. I want to level up a skill that's going to scale with me. When As I get stronger, as my skills get stronger, they're going to scale with this Wrathful Edge, which is going to overall make me stronger because it's a flat critical damage plus 18%. So level up the passives level up the skills that actually have the biggest impact on the content you're trying to do do those first okay don't waste all your skills trying to get everything to an equal level and then you're just going to slow your progression that way max out certain skills first what i would recommend though is get everything to blue first and then slowly start trying to get each skill to purple and before you know it you'll have everything to purple just like me and you'll be able to enjoy the game much much better but again this is a, a korean mmo it's meant to take a while it's not going to be an overnight thing it's not going to take you two weeks it's going to take you some time to to get everything the way you want it's very rewarding though once you do it the second thing is not getting strong early okay first thing you should be doing in this game and i've made videos on this already is please 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 get your weapon to plus nine when you go to do dungeons um people are going to want to see your weapon they're going to want you to link your weapon in the chat they're going to want to see that you have a plus nine blue weapon if it's not they may not take you so Get your weapon a plus nine, first thing without a doubt. When you do your contracts, you can pick the contracts that only give you these weapon growth stones. I would knock those out as soon as you can. You can come to Pure Light. Uh, again, I've made a video on this before, but I come to Pure Light here and I'll just show you really quick. I come to Pure Light and I do my weapon contracts here. You can farm them. If you're keeping up to date on them, you get 10 a day. So that can only take you like 15 minutes to do a day that you're actually doing it. If you're like me and you let them stack because I had some things come up personal, I couldn't play the game for a few days. I maxed out on contracts, which is bad. But when you have contracts, you can just come here. You can look, look, I've got these here. These are great. You can get these and then you can do your weapon contracts. You can just pick your weapon contracts. Once you take the two weapon contracts on this page, you can refresh and just keep hunting the weapon contracts and just knock them all out. In no time, you will farm the blue growth stones and you will be able to max your weapon out in no time. You'll get it to plus nine in like maybe like two or three days if uh if you just knock out all of your weapon contract maybe a week maybe a week right we'll just say a week okay two three days a little quick probably a week you can get it to plus nine your first week playing the game you can get your weapon to plus nine you just need to know how to do it right people are going to be messing up they're going to be coming and doing these contracts they're just going to be doing all the contracts they're going to be getting everything and they're going to be gimping gimping themselves because they're not getting their weapon to plus nine first do your weapon first trust me okay um also use your dimension crystals wisely when you do these secret dungeons okay you're going to do these paloa dungeons these are going to give you uh items okay and they also have a chance to give you a box in the box you can choose whatever weapon you want you can choose if you want the carnix hellbow you can choose if you want the carnix nether sword you can choose if you want the magnitude's berserk blade or the laquarius thorny edge there's a chance that you get this box early on I would I would definitely pick the weapons you want, but I wouldn't roll into purple yet. Wait, because I'm telling you, like I said earlier, you're not going to be able to trade it out right off the bat. So what I would do is I would save the boxes. Save them till you have a few boxes and then mass open them up to see if you can open up. Let's say you had six boxes. Open all of them up. If you're trying to get the Laquarius Thorny Edge, open all of them up for the Laquarius Thorny Edge. And the reason is because you'll have one Laquarius Thorny Edge out of the six that has a good trait. And the other five, you're going to try to roll so that you can get good traits to put them on your main Laquarius Thorny Edge. That is my recommendation. Now, as you continue to play the game, you're going to be getting like the Laquarius Grip. You're going to be getting the General Fury's headgear. You're going to be getting these beasts. Beast King's uh, Gilded Bracers. You're going to be getting the Archpriest Devotion Cloak. As you get these, you can disenchant them. And when you disenchant them, they're going to give you these Dimension Crystals. Well, every 40 Dimension Crystals that you get, you can come over here. And I'll show you real quick. You can come over here to Stone Guard Castle. Okay. You can come over here to Stone Guard Castle and armor pieces give you six dimension crystals. Um, weapons give you 12 and I believe accessories also give you six, I believe. Uh, so you can disenchant them for dimension crystals. You can come here to this weapon crafter, click this little weapons materials here. And here you can see that you can get 
a box. So you can buy a box for 40 dimension crystals and you can just stack boxes on boxes on boxes. Okay. Now kind of going back real quick before I switch topics, going back to the guild raids. Let's say you get that turn box sword week one and you're like, oh my God, I got my first purple. Okay, great. Come over here, do your dungeons, disenchant the items you don't need, get the crystals and come over here and buy a bunch of these boxes. And what you're going to want to do once you buy the boxes is you're going to want to roll the Carnix Nether Sword. Get a bunch of those and hopefully you'll get good traits on the Carnix Nether Sword, which then you can pull off and put on your uh your Chernobog sword and then you can roll your plus nine blue weapon into the into the Chernobog sword it'll be plus six and it'll be fully traded that is how you do it guys i'm telling you that is how you level up the weapons effectively in this game it's not like hey let me get the weapon let me upgrade okay great yeah you're gonna have a plus six purple but it's not gonna have any traits on it it's gonna be trash like if you look at um if you look at my sword here this is trash it is plus seven but I have one trait on it. I don't have heavy attack. I don't have critical on it. You know, it's this is garbage. I would have better off been keeping my blue weapon with max traits, but the blue sword that I had didn't have max traits because I already knew that I was going to be getting a different sword. So that's why I have it like that. But hopefully you guys, hopefully that makes sense for you on the strategy there. Um, also, not using your abyss tokens. And I am, you know, I have 20,000. I'm gimping myself by not doing this. You're going to need gold. These abyss tokens you use to do your abyss open world dungeons. The most common one is Silas Abyss here. Okay. When you come to Silas Abyss, you're going to kill mobs. And those mobs are going to give you a gold increase based on if you have abyss crystals. Okay. So the more of these crystals that you have, these abyss con uh, tokens up here, the more you're going to be able to farm gold quicker okay and you need gold for everything in this game when you're leveling your weapon from plus nine blue to a plus six purple that's going to cost you a million gold a million solent that's what it's going to cost you and that's just one time okay every time you level up your skills that costs gold every time you make a um every time you make a lithograph that costs gold every time you extract a trait that costs gold. Every single thing you do in this game costs gold. And if you're sitting on 20,000, uh, well, now 19,000 on the top left there. If you're sitting on these tokens, you're just gimping your progression because you should be farming your gold because you're going to need it. Now, me, I don't like farming because I'm melee and it takes me forever to do it. So that's why I don't do it. But right now I'm kind of rich. I've got almost 14 million gold because of the event. So I don't really need the gold right now. And because of my progression where I'm at, I'm kind of like capped right now, unless kind of, unless I kind of swipe. So right now it's not as important for me to have gold, but early on, you guys are 100% going to need gold. I'm telling you, you guys are going to get to a point where you don't have gold and you guys are going to be like, man, I need gold. Okay. Do your con do come to the abyss and do the gold here, farm gold here for like an hour or two a day and uh, make your money and then save your gold for all of your upgrades so that you can level up your skills so that you can level up your armors and everything else that you need gold for in this game, which is practically everything. So uh, that is a, a mistake to avoid. There is not taking the time, not utilizing these uh, tokens up here and farming the open world dungeons. You guys are gimping yourself if you're not doing that. Uh, and the last thing, guys, the last thing to wrap this video up, do not, if you're an officer or you're a guild leader in this game, do not, under any circumstances, be toxic to other guilds for whatever reason. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there may come a time when that guild rebounds. Maybe they go under a restructure. Maybe they reform, have different leadership. Or maybe they decide to go a different direction with the guild and get serious. And they end up being a top 10 or top 20 guild. That guild could be an ally to you, okay, later on. The, so you don't want to burn those bridges early, man, okay? It's a game. Just enjoy it. Don't be M. Don't be toxic. These guilds that are all competing in the game may end up being an ally later on so don't burn those bridges keep it fun don't be toxic um you know if you want to if you want to do some banter like you know whatever you want to you know shit talk a little bit that's fine but don't be toxic right at, at, when if you're doing an event and it's a pvp event just say ggs guys because no one wants to be super toxic in this kind of game right just be friendly have fun 
don't be toxic to other guilds they may end up being your ally later on or they may end up being your enemy later on like an arc enemy where it's like constant battles between them you don't want to be on their bad side uh they may you know you guys might want to offer some type of alliance or temporary temporary alliance against maybe a larger force so just keep it friendly you never know what can happen uh in this game i know there was some guilds that came out of nowhere in my server that are massive massive guilds and you know if we were toxic to them early on maybe they would have, have been so friendly towards us uh towards the end so that's the video guys i hope it helps out uh and i hope the the content is good and that you guys took something from it if you guys have any questions throw me a question in the comment section if you guys like the video smash the like button it helps me out big time and it pushes my content out to other people that may enjoy the content as well and if you want to give me some love all you got to do is throw me a sub i'm putting content out every week for you guys on throne of liberty and i'm trying to keep it fresh for y'all so that you guys learn uh you know a little bit of uh the game and and kind of see you know if there's things changing in the game i'm making sure that i'm uh covering all of that uh, for you as well there's some changes that have been going i'm still making some new videos i'll be putting those out here in the next week or two thanks so much for all the support see you guys in game peace